Hi guys, I'm back again here with the Fallen King album. As promised, I'm going to talk about how we wrote the I Am The Tyrant lyrics. I actually wrote this, not Jade. This is the page, of course, with me. First, let's make a quick recap. In the previous video, we talked about lyrics in general and explained the process we used to write them. If you watch that video first, you will be more familiar with stuff like concept, placeholder lyrics, or other stuff I'm going to mention during this video. So be sure to check that video out. Now let's go on with the I am the tyrant writing process explanation. As we said, lyrics are usually the last Thing we do, the last thing we create. We start from a melody, we finish the song with all the vocal lines and then just at the end we write the final lyrics. Before writing lyrics we think about the concept. I'm making a quick recap. I was supposed to be the Frozen Crown lead singer before even thinking about including a female singer in the band. Then when I included that singer, I mean Jade, she wasn't planned to be the lead singer. I mean, we were supposed to share songs made like 50-50, something like that. Later on, I just ended up liking her voice more and I didn't like the idea of, uh, of things not being that clear. I mean, I wanted her to be the front woman, to be the lead singer, that's it. But I had songs that were written for my voice, for my attitude, and I Am The Tyrant was one of these. So with this song, I wanted to ironically make a reference to the fact I was stealing the lead singer role and singing lead parts myself. So this is also expressed in the video where she is actually in prison while I'm taking her role as a lead singer. At the end of the video, I am in prison in her place and she is wearing the Tyron mask. To symbolize the fact that after that song, she is taking back the lead singer role. You know, even the, the Fallen King album cover pretty much came out from the idea that I've always been the lead singer until that moment and uh, there was uh, a new person, this girl, that was actually stealing my crown. I could be the fallen king, you know, and she is the new person that takes my place. By the way, uh, I also made this cover. As you know, I also do the artworks for the band, so uh, if you are interested in knowing more about the artworks, as usual, let me know in a comment. Now, before we talk about placeholder lyrics, I remember the chorus of the song was saying I am the high man, high man. That actually didn't have any concept behind. So I wanted to keep that I am the something, you know. As usual, I started from the chorus. Now, there was something we didn't mention with Jade and this was mostly because uh, it's something that I do mostly. It is true that we start from a concept, but sometimes it goes like this. The song, I mean the melody, inspires me a phrase, inspires me a couple of words, and these words end up being the main part of the song, I mean the, the most uh, representative part of the song, maybe the chorus, and then from those words I start developing the whole song. Oh yeah, I have it right here. In the Beatle Wolf debut album, we had this song called Chameleon. This song is of course talking about, you know, see how, how much coolness. In this song I was talking about a person that is trying to mimic other people, that is trying to become invisible, to be accepted by other people. You know, it, I was pretty much, you know, uh, comparing a person to a chameleon, to the actual animal, you know. But before ending up with this chameleon image, there was the chorus. The chorus was uh, inspired by me by a song by Adele, which was uh, Fire to the Rain. And I said fire to the rain, na na na. Forgive me for this interpretation, uh, Adele, sorry. I fell in love with that, with Adele's voice, but with that melody in particular. I took my guitar and I wrote the Chameleon Chorus.
Then there was this uh, ending part which was uh, Crawling away to fade down, fade down, fade down Also at the end of the Set Fire to the Rain chorus There was this repeating part I wanted to include a repeating part as well And when I was writing this song, when I was writing the placeholder lyrics for Chameleon I ended up writing uh, na -na 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 -na, Fade out, fade out, fade out I was like, okay, fade out sounds pretty good. It's great in this part. So I, I was like, okay, this fade out thing is perfect. You know, this fade out words are just fitting very well the melody. So I took those words as the starting point for the lyrics. So, you know, I started from the fading out concept. I just uh, imagine, you know, a chameleon actually fading out, you know, uh, disappearing you know in the environment i was like oh yeah i could maybe call this song chameleon i could talk about a person that is actually uh, acting like a chameleon so that was the concept so this is a case where i started from a phrase that inspired me a concept that brought me to write this lyrics now back to Frozen Crown, as I said, the chorus was originally I am the high man. So I started thinking about a word that could actually replace the word high man. And since I had already developed the idea of uh, me being the king, I just uh, started thinking about a word that could replace king. I was, oh yeah, tyrant is perfect, you know, because I was, I've been accused by people in my entire life of being a tyrant, of being a, uh, a very bad person that want to impose himself, you know, all that kind of stuff. People don't understand. Every single band needs someone that takes the responsibilities and that take decisions, you know. Bands that are equally taking decisions, bands where all people are equally involved in writing music, well, of course, we all know where they end up being. By the way, so it's like, I have this melody now, okay? I have this, I am the tyrant, na 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 na. I was like, okay, uh, I want to express this concept, you know, uh, Jade is actually stealing my crown. This was probably the thing that actually inspired me, the title. So after telling, I am the tyrant, crown and fallen were perfect, because of course, crown was also a reference to our band name, and fallen was exactly what I wanted to express. I was a fallen king, a fallen tyrant. And then I had this na 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 I wanted to give this song that kind of fantasy vibes. Ancient times, uh, war, swords, axes, uh, armies, uh, orcs, whatever, you know. So I was like, okay, this tyrant could maybe a supernatural being. It could be uh, someone that always existed, a divine being. You know, and then in my mind came the idea of Dracula. You know, some sort of a dark lord. We can talk about Sauron here. But of course, Jade is the Lord of the Ring expert. So, so I was like, okay, okay, this guy could have existed before, before the age of man. Yeah, I was, oh yeah, before the age of man. That, oh, this sounds great. Yeah, yeah. So he always existed, he was exiled, you know, this was probably uh, close to Sauron story, but I'm not sure about that. Anyway, th this was really fitting, this was adding a lot of mystery. I'm skipping Beneath the Dark at the moment, that was pretty much a filler. Let's go to the second part of the chorus. We have this part that is pretty much mirroring the first one, so we have I am the tyrant, drown and fallen before the age of man. Dun, dun, na, 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 na. This was going to be the same, you know, same melody uh, except for a couple of notes. Here I wanted to make something that was similar to the first part of the chorus, but not the same. This is something I always noticed to be very strong in a lot of popular choruses. This is going to be a lot more catchy, you know. I am the... Na -na. Okay, I need two words that pretty much rhyme with crown and fallen. So what I did was actually start from these two words and then maybe try to find the 
I am the word replacing tyrant in a second moment, you know. Maybe these two words could help me because I was, uh, you know, trying to search for a word that could rhyme with tyrant and also mean something, you know, in that case. Also describe another aspect of this tyrant, but I wasn't able to. So I was like, okay, let's just search for these two words to ending words, maybe they are going to give me an answer. I was like, okay, okay, so supernatural being, uh, Dracula, uh, you know, someone that has been exiled ages ago. Okay, this guy could be like some sort of uh, undead, so yeah, rotten, rotten was rotten, fallen, it was, uh, this was not a rhyme, but an assonance, I hope that's the correct pronunciation. Um, it sounded quite close to that word. Okay, so I had the uh, fallen twin, which was rotten, crowned, bound, I thought about, oh yeah, bound, it could be like tied up with something, uh, it could be, you know, bound uh, by chains, you know, or something. So that sounded perfect to me. And uh, then I was like, okay, I am the, I was desperate. And then I was like, okay, hunter. I chose this word because it really reminded me of that predatory attitude of uh, Dracula, for example, or a vampire. So now I needed a twin for the before the age of man phrase. This was pretty straightforward. I was like, oh yeah, beyond, beyond, replaced before the gates of hell. It was rhyming with the age of man and it was also very meaningful because we were talking about a devilish creature. This guy was probably reigning in hell or something. Now this chorus was everything I needed to keep going with the rest of the song. I mean, let's say the chorus is 99% of times the hardest part because of course that needs to actually be perfect. I mean, perfect for the melody, perfect for the image that you want to create. And most importantly, it needs to tell everything about someone, about the thing. I mean, choruses need to be some sort of uh, summary of of uh, the whole song and they need to exist on their own they need to make sense on their own as well it's not like verses verses maybe can start with a problem start with um, a topic and then solve that topic at the end you know at the end of all verses you know a specific topic could go on for the whole song and then be solved just at the end of it instead a chorus should be a complete thing people are supposed to sing that stuff live of course we like we love people to sing our stuff live because we love to sing stuff at other people concerts of course I mean as listeners as fans we just want people to sing something that is you know meaningful for them straightforward simple it's not something that doesn't mean anything if taken out of context now let's go on with the second part after deciding I was going to talk about this tyrant, about this creature, I just felt like describing this being. In this specific case, I wanted people to enter the story. You know, those movies that start by showing you a landscape, you know, mountains, trees, a forest. You know the story is going to be settled in some very epic environment. I've always been a huge uh, World of Warcraft uh, fan, actually a Warcraft fan. and suddenly Highlands came in my mind, you know, the Highlands. So, na, 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 Highlands. Okay, okay, let's go on. Maybe something else after this is going to give me inspiration. Na, 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 there's a wind. Oh, daughters of wind. The daughters of wind. Oh, yeah, this is uh, great, you know, daughters of wind. This was also a reference to the word I was uh, thinking about creating with Jade, of course, because we wrote uh, The Shield Maiden together. So I also wanted you know, to create a link between songs. I was like, na 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 in the islands, na 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 da, a wind, da, there's a wind, songs of the sea. Oh, okay, songs of the sea. Okay, so these were, you know, nice ways to describe nature around, you know. And then I was like, na 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 This word had to rhyme or to be close to highlands. I was like hunger, you know, hunger. Oh yeah, I could make like hunger. World, 
wolves, wolves and their hunger, you know. I was like, oh yeah, th this is perfect, you know. Be the Wolf is my band, my main band, I could say. And of course, I wanted a way to also make a reference to my past, so okay, I can talk about the origins of this tyrant. So I was like, uh, yeah, well, this is quite fascinating, raised by the wolves and their hunger. And it was also meaningful because uh, Be The Wolf actually were the, the starting point, you know. I grew up with Be The Wolf, I was really angry back then, I'm still now, but you know, that was perfect to express all the will I had, of course, together with, you know, this two guys here. This is quite a pretty awesome photo. So I went back at the beginning and I was like, okay, so the first word could be born from the na -na 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 on the highlands. So I, I decided I was going to talk about the origins of this tyrant. So I ended up, you know, with that born from the depths in the highlands. Now the depths in the highlands is not that meaningful, you know. But of course, I needed to fill the metrics and I needed to actually use that kind of sounding words. So this is another case where meaning is not sacrificed, but it's like, you know, we're not giving words 100% of importance. We are adapting them to the melody. And this is really important to me, you know. And by the way, this also had, you know, quite some sort of meaning, you know. I was like, you know, this tyrant was born from the depths in the highland, you know, why not? Between the daughters of wind and the sons of the sea. I added that between. Raised by the wolves and their hunger. And now I was like, na 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 now we have this kind of rhymes which are A, B, B. So now I was going to make something that could be maybe A, B, B as well. Or since that was going to be quite challenging because of course finding a lot of words that end up with you no know, like sea, wind, being, you know, they are not that much. It was more likely for me to make something like A, B, B and then A, C, C. So two new rhymes. I started from the last one. I remember I was like began, na 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 na, began. And I just imagined this as told in the chorus. This thing was actually existing before the word as we know it, I imagine this guy existing before maybe a word that was actually a changing moment for for the whole world, you know, had a huge impact on the world. When I thought about this, I was like, oh yeah, this could make sense, you know, uh, this guy is some sort of supernatural being, so he is also very smart and clever. So for that reason he knew, he knew things before they actually happened. I knew the words bloody and before the struggle began. As said in the chorus, this tyrant had been imprisoned or exiled or something after a specific happening. So in this word something had happened, you know, something bad, something, you know, that changed the world forever. So I thought about this kind of, uh, you know, reset, you know, this kind of uh, ending, bloody ending for the world. And yeah, I just wanted to express the fact that this guy, uh, this supernatural being, was actually uh, knowing how things were going to go before the struggle actually happened. The struggle that maybe was just an introduction to an actual war or something. Hail to the Beast is something that really came up for me really naturally, just like the fade out thing in the chameleon part. Hail to the Beast! Na -na -na -na. Hail to the Beast was something that really, you know, the, the melody, the atmosphere of the song really, you know, inspired me those words. Now, this beast could be maybe an incarnation of the tyrant, could be the tyrant himself, Maybe it could be the one that actually destroyed the world and that was exiled, but maybe not. I mean, um, this is something I actually know. I had a clear idea of what happened, but 
I'm not going to tell you more because I have a lot of uh, things uh, going, I have a lot of projects, you know, and I, I really don't want to, to spoil anything because this could be used in a much better way than just in this video that, you know, a very little amount of people is going to watch until this point. So the most important thing is I wanted to leave to the listeners the freedom to actually interpret the song and that because that it's always been a fundamental part of me being a fan, you know, of other bands. You know, a lot of lyrics I was reading were not easy to understand for me to interpret it. And that was one of the most fascinating parts of that. So I just wanted to leave something going, you know, not clearly specified. This was pretty straightforward. A hail to the beast, to the pain that it brings. And then... Na -na 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 this was inspired to me by Jade other band Ashes You Leave. This was just perfect. Ashes, ashes. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So I thought about this uh, monster, this uh, this being actually destroying everything and uh, leaving just ashes around. So this was quite a strong uh, image to me. But the ashes he leaves after coming unseen. I had a lot of things going here. You know, I was I always been a huge fan of uh, Judas Priest. If you know, of course, in our later album we made a Nightcrawler cover. Nightcrawler has been my favorite song for many many years. I loved uh, the whole painkiller concept of this uh, creature. Yeah, the Nightcrawler was, uh, you know, this kind of beast coming unseen, uh, coming silently hiding in the darkness you know this was something that really you know contributed to the coming unseen line now here I had already given this part to Jade this over the hills we this is an opening I explained very well in uh, our previous video uh, how to write a song the frozen crown way blah 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 uh, so just go watch that because these things are pretty much linked together and I don't want to repeat myself here it will be just too long that's the point where Jade enters she enters with her voice which is different from mine she brings some light to the song I wanted to introduce something that could break what had been told until now and uh, over the hills with her voice over the hills that was quite dreamlike you know over the hills uh, of course over the hills and far away is uh, again one of my all-time favorite songs by Gary Moore one of my favorite artists ever and guitar player as well so over the hills was again pretty straightforward I wanted you know Jade vocals to suggest uh, a far land with some light you know I was imagining like a, a battlefield red uh, shades of color, you know, sand, dust, rocks, you know, something pretty dark and gloomy and I was imagining over the hills some, some light, you know, something going. And now we were carried by the wind. Why do I start at first person, like I knew the word bloody and and then there's this we were carried by the wind, of course, because being this part sung by Jade, of course, this is a different part, so we have like another character coming, you know, we have someone else, this could maybe the tyrant enemies be the ones that the tyrant actually had defeated in the first place and that were maybe going to fight him back and imprison him. Who were this we? This we I imagine to be the shield maidens. They were supposed to be like the nemesis of the tyrant. Actually fighting the tyrant back. So we were carried by the wind. This is also another reference to the song The Shield Maiden where we are also talking at the second person plural. When we say stormy is the wind that we walked, whipping our tails, riding the wind, carried by the wind, walking the wind, going with the wind, you know, so something like that. There's also always this wind going. So this was also the point where I imagined, you know, that this tyrant could have been born between the daughters of wind and the sons of the sea that were maybe supposed to be some good persons, you know, like a nice and happy population. And maybe the tyrant was just a corrupted 
being. Was maybe a corrupted son of the sea, maybe, who knows. So back to this part, uh, for the glory we will rise up once again, of course. This is something very cheesy, of course, you know, uh, very cheesy, but you know, we're playing power metal, we love that. Uh, I love the... Uh, for the king, for the land, for the mountains, for the green valleys where dragons fly, for the glory, the power, the wind, the black lord. Our search for the Emerald Source. Or Gloria, Gloria Perpetua in this dawn of victory. So we had to include this kind of thing, you know, of course we were talking about an opening here that was pretty glorious, yeah, yeah, so it is the glory word. Now let's go on, so now we have the chorus, which I already explained, I'm sweating a lot. We have a clear example of a variation in the verses, you know, we have verses that are pretty much the same, you know, verse 1 and verse 2, which are very similar in the melody and the metrics. Like, for example, Ever Winter. And then we have songs like, yeah, The Shield Maiden or uh, I Am The Tyrant, where verse 1 and verse 2 change quite a lot. So, and why? Why this? Why this happened? Why this happened? I wanted to add variety in the melody. I just uh, wanted to make some less tight verses, you know, with less words going. I wanted to, to sing longer notes and I did that already a little during the melody writing. But the final aspect of this matrix just came when I wrote the lyrics. Now, at this point, the last part of the song is usually the easiest one. You have a very clear idea of the concept in your, in your mind. So, I just wrote these lyrics very quickly. Far from my land, because, you know, I was thinking about this guy who is actually exiled. While gales whisper my name. I always love this, uh, you know, as an Italian, I always love this, the word Gale. Uh, also because Megan Gale was a very hot girl back then, you know. No, Megan Gale was actually a really awesome girl, like, uh, yeah. It was uh, incredible, but no, that was not the reason. I've always been into, you know, the forest whispered my name, uh, uh, talking of the trees by Inerted. Always told you this, also in the truck by truck video, if I'm not wrong. So I like this idea of, uh, you know, this being being exiled, but hearing winds still remembering him. You know, the word was still remembering about this tyrant, it was still calling for him. Maybe this tyrant was exiled, was set apart, and at that point, the word just went towards destruction. Maybe that tyrant was just a fundamental part of the world where evil and good had to be, to exist, you know, balance in the force, stuff, stuff like that. So I had this picture in my mind, like, you know, this tyrant has been at the beginning of the movie, movie, uh, maybe this tyrant was the bad guy, but later on, the good guy just realized it was important, it was needed, maybe to help them to fight a worst danger. Maybe the beast we are talking about here. This was also a specific case where, you know, the story was building up as I was writing the lyrics, you know. It's like, uh, maybe some people could think, you know, I'm improvising. I'm not improvising. I'm just getting suggestions from my own stuff. I mean, I write the melody, that melody suggests me some images. I write phrases, those phrases are again suggesting me other things. I have like, you know, this kind of visions, you know. The Lord of the Ring, you know, every kind, every kind of book, anything, every novel, every movie was not written all together. I mean, of course, there's always a starting point, and then you decide how to make your character evolve. And this was how I was creating the song, you know? The world where the song was settled into was evolving with the song itself. Far from my land, wild gales whisper my name, buried under the sands lay the wasted remains of the kingdom we claim. 
this was pretty straightforward, you know. This tyrant was defeated, exiled or something, imprisoned, and his kingdom was now laying under the sands, you know. Many eras passed so that this kingdom was actually, you know, devoured by the dust, by the, by the sand, you know. And that's it. Now we have the growling part. So what concerns the growling part, of course we don't have a melody here, so we are more free for what concerns the, the metrics, but I tend to use words that could be better, that could be more impactful, that could have a bigger impact when pronounced while growling, you know. Oh, first of all, the fire is not that much correct. I release fire, you know, usually. I know fire do not go with the, of course, but, you know, that was just like, you know, for the sake of the, of the matrix, to give it more, more rhythm, you know. I'll release the fire, and then moving, this moving was really powerful when sung by me uh, while growling towards the rifts. So, why the rifts? This thing is actually going to happen when this being is freed from uh, his prison, you know, or brought back from the exile. So I was imagining this uh, battlefield, this uh, guy coming with his army and uh, unleashing fire and destroying everything. And I was imagining these rifts, which were like portals, you know, like Diablo rifts actually. Portals maybe having this uh, evil creatures or this enemy, maybe the beast and its army to the world, you know. I was imagining this kind of invasion, you know, and then this tyrant moving on the battlefield as the weak desire unleashes. This is something that was literally inspired to me by the spell Bloodlust in, uh, in Warcraft. You know, this Bloodlust was uh, empowering you so I was imagining, you know, this kind of uh, of evil being actually having this weak desire, you know, this, uh, um, you know, if you're an evil person, if you are on the evil side, on the dark side of the force, you have evil desires and that makes you more evil. Now, thorns was a word I wanted to include because of how it was going to sound while growling, but literally gave me this image of these thorns, these uh, branches covering a tombstone, covering uh, the door that was sealing the crypt of this tyrant. He was banished and his reign was uh, closed forever, maybe with a curse or with, with a spell or something, and sealed, you know, during, you know, during the years, during the centuries, the door that was locking his crypt away, his word away, that was locking him away from the world, ended up being covered by branches, by plants, by thorns. And this is why thorns entwined on my grave. This, again, the Dracula reference. So I was thinking about someone that was banished, but also about someone that was actually killed, but still living or unliving. Entwined on my grave, sealed up forever my throne, death after death. This is something that came in my mind later. I mean, this was really the, the last thing I wrote. Uh, death after death. You know, it just sounded perfect. And that also, you know, gave me the idea of this creature dying and being reborn again and again and again and again, you know. This was quite fascinating. I loved the idea of including this to add to the supernatural being of this creature. So, this was I Am The Tyrant. I hope you enjoyed this explanation, this sort of walkthrough about how I actually wrote these lyrics. So let me know in a comment if there are other songs from The Fallen King or Crown in Frost or from Winter Bane or maybe some Be The Wolf songs or Volturian songs as well. You would like to hear some explanation about. So whatever.